Good morning. Welcome on this day. We have gathered together as God's own people. The sun may be behind the clouds, but we know the Son of God who comes to us and blesses us in this time. So as we come and we prepare ourselves, heart, mind, and soul to worship God, let us do so as we listen to our prayer. Savior nourishes everyone. Seek us out, O God, and give us yourself. Here is the water of life, the word that feeds the food of eternity. Come and praise the vine that gives all goodness. Our hymn, at the font we start our journey. Band will play it through once, and then we will share his word and its message together. At the font, we start our journey.
this resurrected one we come. We bring who we are, we confess who we are. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. We come together, O oh Lord, we come to you, we come in need. For though we have started the journey, we have not followed through very well. When your way becomes difficult, we fall to the wayside. When your word is unclear, we choose another. When your voice is hard to hear, we don't even listen. Forgive us, gracious God. Lift us up and restore us by your grace. Nourish and strengthen us by the presence of your Spirit. And renew our commitment to follow in your way and walk by your side. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Lord hears our confession and is eager to forgive. Take to heart the good news, believe it, live it. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Good news that we know, yes, that we seek to live and live with one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of John. Words that will probably be familiar to you that Jesus speaks as he is gathered together with his disciples that fateful night and shares words of encouragement and instruction, words of life. As we listen, as we read, let us listen for God's word for us. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. My Father removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, my Father prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Let us pray. Come, Holy God, through your spirit, bless your word, that we might be guided, filled, given life through your love for all. In Christ's name we pray, amen. You have probably experienced the phenomenon yourself. Driving along the highway or, or perhaps as a passenger and you get a call from someone on your cell phone and you begin a nice conversation, but as you go along, it begins to get weaker and weaker and finally cuts out. Used to have that problem at one of our houses that we used to own 
where we could get a good connection when we were upstairs, but you went down to the basement and it was like nothing. Branches of a vine connected in order to be nourished and to know life. And Jesus says, abide in me, remain in me, remain connected. Now, it's not typical when you're driving on the highway or when you're sitting in your house, it's not typical that the cell phone tower moves closer to you. Typically, it's the other way around. We move closer to it or further away. Someone once noted, if you are not as close to God as you used to be, you don't have to guess who moved. We move. We wander. We, we, we stray. We, we lose our connection. For it's all about connection. That remaining, that abiding, that relationship. So what can we do to, to, to maintain that connection, to, to strengthen that connection, to nurture that connection? Well, just like we talk with people that we know and maintain that relationship, that's important for us as well with our Lord. Prayer, that conversation with our God, it's like talking to anyone. I mean, some people think, oh, we have to get that fancy language, and I don't know that fancy language, and I can't do it well. It's not fancy language. It's conversation. Yes, it's important to remember to whom we're talking. But it's a conversation. Where we talk and we share, but also we need to be willing to listen. God will speak if we have our ears, our hearts open. And, and sometimes prayer is simply being aware of God's presence. And being alert to that, looking for it, being sensitive to God, simply being with me, with you, here. And that becomes our prayer at that time. Of course, talking about listening, what about what we just did? Listening, reading, hearing God's word as spoken to us in the scriptures. Yes, it involves picking it up and reading. Yes, it involves hearing particular words, specific words, knowing that story, reminding ourselves of that story. But also sometimes the particular words may not speak. Sometimes the importance, the, the, the nurturing aspect of the scriptures are simply hearing the familiar voice of God's word. You know how you can have that experience when you're together in a group and maybe it's a group of people that you don't have a clue who they are and you just kind of feel lost, but then you hear the tone of a voice that's familiar. And suddenly you feel more welcome. You feel more at home. You may not know exactly what your friend is talking about, but you hear their voice and you have that connection and it feeds the soul. But not only with, with prayer can we nurture this connection, not only through the scripture can we nurture this connection, our love, especially our love in action, can nurture our connection with God. 
We said something about this last week when we were talking about love and actually doing it, being involved in it, having to be a part of our lives, acting on it. You know, we affirm that God is love. And where love is, there is God. So when we do that love, when we reach out to others in love, when, when we share of ourselves and give of ourselves to another in love, God is there. And it becomes kind of a, a, a back and forth experience where we exercise our love, we, we do that love for another, and it nurtures our relationship with God. And as our relationship with God is nurtured, it helps to encourage us to do more action and love. And again, and back and forth. Jesus says, those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Now, note, fruit does not cause the connection. Fruit is evidence of the connection. And so the Apostle Paul writes, live by the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. And guidance is what pruning is all about. You know, even the best branch on the vine gets out of hand every now and then and needs to be pruned. As someone once told me, real vines are unruly. Does that describe us? We were living in a house and it had a huge oak tree in the front. I had to mow the lawn, of course, and pushing the lawnmower through the lawn. And, but this oak tree wanted to grow down so that at the start of every season, I, I was in danger of poking my eyes out by mowing the lawn underneath the oak tree. So I would trim the, the branches that hung too low. Next season, are branches that are too low. So I have to trim them. And no, I wasn't growing tall. So I had to trim them again so I could mow and so I wouldn't poke my eyes out and could make it through. And the next season, there were branches that were down, so I had to trim them again. All the while trying to encourage the tree not to grow down, but to grow up. The vine grower seeks to determine and to shape the growth of the vine by pruning it. So that the direction, the, the energy of the vine does not go in this direction, but goes in that direction. And please note that this is the vine grower's prerogative. It is the vine grower who has that authority, that plan, that purpose to shape, to direct, and to know how and where to prune. But how do we experience that pruning in our lives? How do we know that, that shaping, that, that, that coaxing, that molding in the proper direction? Again, I think we need to go back to the Word, God's Word for us. Jesus says it, you have already been cleansed. Same word also means pruned. You have already been cleansed or pruned by the Word that I have spoken to you. This Word that we read who has 
particular words of direction for us, this word who, that shares this wondrous story of God's working with the people, this word that sometimes is simply that voice that we hear teaches us, guides us, convicts us, tells us that we are to love our enemies and we have to recognize that we're not doing that, so maybe we need to go in another direction. This word that speaks of justice for the poor and mercy and compassion for all. And when we hear that word and see our lives and know that they are not exactly shaped in that direction, it brings us back to guide us down God's path to prune us in God's direction. But not only the word, I also want to suggest that the community helps to prune us. Or at least there's that possibility. In his play, Our Town, Thornton Wilder tells the story of pretty much everyday life in Grover's Corners, New Hampshire, a fictional town. He shares the story of the people and their working and their lives. At one point, there's a, there's a flashback to a time when the two main characters, Emily and George, were in high school and beginning to know some sense of their coming relationship together. They've been friends, they've grown up together. But Emily shares at this point as they're walking along the way that she feels like George is, well, George has kind of become too much into himself after he's become a, a local baseball star. She says he's become conceited and stuck up. Of course, right after she has said that, she is horrified at what she has said. But George, though the words hurt, takes the words to heart. And he invites her and they, they go have a, a, a soda at the local drugstore. Because he wants to celebrate. Celebrate what? And George says, I'm celebrating because I've got a friend who tells me all the things that ought to be told me. I'm celebrating because I've got a friend who tells me all the things that ought to be told me. Do we have a friend like that? Are we a friend? Like that. Now, yes, let me state it with caution right at the very beginning. This is not simply to give us license to, to spout off at someone just because we disagree with them or we don't like what they're doing or, or, or somehow what they do rubs us the wrong way. No. What we seek to do is speak the truth in love. Because we care for the person. We want their well-being, goodness for them in life. That's why we speak. So it makes a difference how we speak, but it also makes a difference how we hear that word from our friend. It takes an ability and you need a willingness to seek to discern God speaking to us through the words of others. That itself is a pruning. Trusting that somehow God is using that person to teach me and to guide me. That that person becomes one of God's vessels, tools for pruning me. And the importance of the relationship with that person is crucial. That nurturing, that caring, that loving relationship, 
that connection with one another through our Lord. For it's all about connection. We signify that connection at the font. That reminder of that, our connection with the source of life and therefore connection with one another. We celebrate that connection at the table. As we commune with our Lord, so we also commune with one another. For as we are connected with our Lord, so we are connected with one another. And so he says to us once again, I am the vine, you are the branches, abide in me and bear much fruit. Amen. Let us pray. Now to you, O oh Lord, as you have given your life to us, so we give our lives to you, to be touched, guided, shaped, nurtured in you. Invite us to stand as we're able so that we might affirm our faith using a portion of a brief statement of faith. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere, the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves in the love of God and neighbor and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the Word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life in the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the Church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. You may be seated. As we come before God in a time of prayer, several that I would share with you this morning, First of all, I ask for thoughts and prayers for Jim Schallenberger. He's been dealing with an infection in and out of the hospital, was in the hospital uh, this past week. I don't know for certain if he's out yet. Don't know. Okay. But they've been giving him antibiotics. He just hasn't been feeling well. So let us pray that they would be able to find things and figure out what's going on and address it so that he might get better. And then we celebrate with Lynn and Bonnie Redfield, who are once again great-grandparents, great-grandson born. What day was it? It's on Wednesday. 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 Okay. Okay. Wednesday. We celebrate with you in that joy. We know God's goodness with us in the joys, in the sorrows, and everything in between. 
So we bring ourselves to God confident of God's nurture and care. You will see the response above. Let us join in prayer. Let us pray. Wonderful and gracious God, we pray for the good of all creation and all people. We pray for the good growth of all your world and all your people. Hear our prayer, God of love and life. We give you thanks, O Lord, for your Holy Spirit, whose work at creation continues even now in us. Through Christ, you have shown your love for this creation and for all our people. Help us to show your love, that all the world may know your power and your goodness. Hear our prayer, God of love and life. Word of life, reveal the wonder of your world to all. Show us anew what lives around us, over us, beneath us, within us. Open our eyes that we might see and respond with goodness, with grace, with care with embrace, enliven your people with your spirit, that we may honor all that you have created with responsible care. Hear our prayer, God of love and life. Almighty God, uphold our sisters and brothers who endure disasters called by weather or war, by famine or sickness, by greed or political instability. Strengthen those who find themselves in peril. Help them know that you are our refuge and strength very present help in times of trouble. And may we all place our hands in your goodness, in your care. Hear our prayer, God of love and life. Giver of all good things, Bring trust and sympathy to the hearts of the peoples and the nations of this world. Let peacemakers reign wherever there is conflict. Give wisdom to leaders and hope to the poor, courage to those who seek justice, and encouragement to those who suffer injustice. And make us a part of your work to share your mercy and your love. Hear our prayer, God of love and life. Good healer, we pray for all who are in need of comfort. Comfort those who mourn. Uphold and strengthen those who are sick. Encourage those who hold vigil. Stand by those who await words and deeds of hope. May your healing come to us all. May your healing work through us all. To bring your strength. To renew your life in our midst and for your world. Hear our prayer, God of love and life. Trusting in your mercy and in your presence, 
we commend to you, O Lord, all those that we have lifted up, those that we speak silently in our hearts. We know that all too often you are the only one who knows the needs that are known. We trust in your knowing us. We trust in your loving us. In the name of your Son, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Knowing of the goodness and grace of God, we are filled with, with gratitude and hope, and we seek to give. How might we share of our lives, of ourselves, with our God in that work of goodness, in that ministry, that mission to the world? As we ponder how we might give, let us do so as we listen to our offering. gratitude to God for God's giving, we give of ourselves. Let us dedicate ourselves in prayer to God. Let us pray. For your grace in sustaining us, we give you thanks, O oh God. For the mercy of your forgiveness and embrace, we give you thanks. For walking with us all our days and teaching us your ways, we give you thanks. We give ourselves to you in thanksgiving for your giving of yourself to us. Use us and these gifts we bring to share your word and embody your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we come to this table. We come to this table where we celebrate our Lord's giving to us. But we come to this table because we are invited. Not because of ourselves, not because of anything we have done, but because our Lord invites us with arms open wide, a smile on the face and love that reaches out to draw us in. So come, all who, who know him and love him, come who all who, who search, who wonder, who ponder, come, all people. Our Lord is here and welcomes you. Come. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a joyful thing to offer thanks to you, God of wisdom and hope. You created the heavens, the earth, all that is in them. You made us in your own image and throughout our history in countless ways 
you show us your mercy. In your great mercy, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ. He took our human nature and, and suffered death on the cross for our redemption. There he made a perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Oh God, because we remember the life and work of Christ, his ministry among the poor and forsaken, his death upon the cross of human shame, the victory of the empty tomb, and his ascension to glory, we offer our lives in praise and thanksgiving to be a living sacrifice in union with Christ our Lord. Send your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on the gifts of bread and cup we share. Let them be our communion with Christ who dwells with you in glory. Through our communion, make us members of his body united in love that we may be Christ for the world and manifest the fullness of his grace through him. In the power of the Holy Spirit, glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Hear us as we share now the prayer we have been taught, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We hear those words, we remember that story. And it was on the night in which Jesus was betrayed. He had gathered with his disciples and he took the bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, after they'd eaten, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, which is sealed on my blood. All of you drink from it doing this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. invited to hold the bread as you are served it so that we might share in it together. Please also note that the ones with the little silver tips are the gluten-free as we share in the passing of, of Christ's body. Bread of heaven, on thee we feed, for thou art our food indeed. 
Ever may our souls be fed with this true and living bread, day by day with strength supplied through the life of Christ who died. And in thanksgiving. As you are served the cup, you're invited to go ahead and drink and share in your participation with Christ this morning. of heaven, thy love supplies this blessed cup of sacrifice. Well, vine of heaven, thy love supplies this blessed cup of sacrifice. Tis thy wounds our healing give, to thy cross we look and live. Thou our life, oh, let us be rooted grafted. and grace we thank you you come to us you fill us you nurture us you guide us you give us life send us forth as your people as your vine as your body to share your life to embody your love to be you, your presence, in this, your world. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Jesus, thou joy of loving hearts. The band will play it through once, then we will share in its words and its affirmation together. Chase the night. 
light of sin away, shed o'er the world by holy light. We go. We have been nurtured. We have been touched. We have been filled. We have been connected to Christ the vine. Go to share its, its shade with the world. Go to, to share its fruit with the world. Go to share its life, God's life, with the world. Knowing that God goes with you today, tomorrow, every day. Let the gathered people of God say, Amen. Amen.